any question on that? Yeah. I was just going to say, because you had mentioned that Quebec didn't have a treaty or they didn't have some sort of rules, I think, earlier. Uh, yeah, that was the beginning of, uh, I guess, conquership, I guess. Right. So then I guess just with you personally and with the development and the teachings and the learning, how has that <clears throat> affected the way that you've perceived uh, the, the Magna Carta and then your own Magna Carta, I guess? Yeah, it's, it somewhat guides me, you know, to understand the system and try to balance the two together. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, like today, you know, you want to fight the system. But this is the foundation of, your, of the system that's in place now. Yeah. So this is one of the first things I would need to be overturned, period. Yeah, so the vision is that, am I still considered a soulless person? Yeah, without spirit, that doesn't have a right to speak. Because that's what it says. Yeah. <laughs> that's the foundation of the system. So that's one of the things that would need to be overturned, the doctrine of discovery. That uh, needs to be overturned. So it doesn't matter how much we fight in court, that's still precedent. <laughs> you see, like, <coughs> you see our genesis. It's the Turtle Island, our belief, where our world began. I could go a little further back, you know, with the story, to the creation of the earth itself, you know, according to the legend. But I did this. Yeah, a guy gave me a turtle and another guy gave me a book and I put that on top and there we go. And I did my studies on geography. <laughs> but you could actually see this Miss, uh, uh, Mississippi River and Colorado River and you see it just waited. Yeah. So that's, that's our vision, right? Uh, of how we see the world, the genesis. And this is the format of our constitution. This is uh, a pike head. When you boil the head of a pike, it'll fall apart. When you pick up all the parts and you put it together, it creates the story. In our in our teachings, the reading is done through these things, such as the turtle shell. I could take you the river systems, you know, the mountain ranges, you know, how the society is distributed, what clan they are, and, you know, and so on, just on a turtle. Uh, on this, I can is our Constitution. Oh yeah, I got this thing at the point. <clears throat> so this part is what we call our shape, our church, our religion, our belief. Yeah. So that's our turtle island. <clears throat> These are birds, a crow and a seagull, which is your judicial system, yin and yang. Your rights and your criminal law. This over here is your uh, vision. What is your vision of your belief? Your constitution. What your what is it made of? And this is your pipes. Forty-four elements. 
This is uh, your uh, canoe, which is your destiny, where you're going, where you're created. This part, we call that uh, Kishakrina, because the sky, to take the hair off the, the hide, or to take the meat off the hide, to prepare. So that, that would be your policy, making your policy. This is your butterfly for your freedom. Like, how do you see freedom? Your axe. Your axe is uh, your responsibility. What do you have to do to exist? Well, welfare, I go to work. <laughs> this is education, your knife. The more you sharpen this thing, the easier things are, are done. The more you understand, the more you learn, you know, the sharper you see. This is your spear, <coughs> this is your head to get. What's your guideline? What's your law? <coughs> What's the reason? This is prosperity, man and woman. You know, what do you need to live with? Prosperity. <coughs> this is your environment. This is your mountains and your gullies. So each family was responsible for a watershed. And the 13 pieces, the, what comes from a sturgeon, that's the only bone he has in his body. It's just a guy. So he enters this world. How does the human fit within all of that? So this is a format of what the Constitution is made. So within the 13 pieces, 13 mountains, they are all each a piece, which creates somewhat of the council. 13 seats in a council, because they only speak for one piece each. So you have 13 in a council. And then you have 13 grandmothers on one side and 13 grandfathers on the other side, which creates the Senate. And the man uh, in the middle, there's uh, one extra piece in the middle of the turtle shell in the middle, which is the chief. Once he understands the council and the Senate, then he's able to move on for his people. So that, that's a formula about to create the Constitution, which is the same thing that the United States used, which is why you have the 13 lines, blue and white. That's why you have the 13 arrows in, uh, in the eagle's form on America, that they use the same framework create their constitution. Yeah. So this would be somewhat your council, how the plan system works. So this this would be each an office with their designated uh, piece of the constitution. So this would be your council, each with their responsibility. And you have the 13 grandmothers on each side, uh, on one side, and I have 13 grandfathers on one side. And that would be your senate. And this is your chief here. So he has to listen to everybody here, plus these, who's guiding. 
decision making. This is a, a prayer for me. I have done. There's my little turtle. There's my peace, clarity. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, the creatures. This is, uh, they say, the height of the dragon. Yeah. This is the height of time. Clarity for the future generation. So we use a, an arrow. So we write up a vision, which is somewhat like a constitution of how we want to exist. <coughs> so that's the arrow. <coughs> you have three feathers in the back for the youth, the adults, and the youngest. They say the heroin is the elders that guides the young generation in the future. Day, in the future, the shaft is where the community is: children, adults, and elders. The one that's going to travel through time. So, like now, we're what we are doing. You know, it's somewhat recreating the Constitution, recreating our place within Canada, North America. So that's the arrow that we're making. And once it's signed, it's like shooting the arrow into the future, because that's the way our children are going to live. So that's how we use the arrow, the reading the arrow. they call the rainbow people, where they will emerge. So anyways, the people are emerging from all over the world, yeah. screaming that uh, they, want, they want to change. See, like when they said that at the end of the world, 2004, it wasn't the world was going to change the world. It was an awakening where the consciousness is beginning to turn to a different way of existing on Earth. And we understood what we could do upon Earth and in what we need to do. So, I, I didn't know how far this thing was going to take me when I started 30 years ago on my study. But now, yeah, it seems like we got a role to play. And I hope I can do the best that I can. Which. Okay, so thank you so much, Jacob, for having the show. Yeah. So now I think we can just like uh, you know pose any questions, comments. This is over the record, so don't worry. And uh, you know just just try, try to enjoy that the Jacob is here and just try to, try to be as open as we can and uh, share what we got with Jacob and that uh, he's going to share also with us and all of us, you know, me too, if I can, I can share with you, everybody, Joe, and so on. Yep. Uh, I was just curious where you were born. You said you were in Quebec, but I wasn't sure if you said that. Uh, La Vierandry Park. 
uh, which is about four hours north from here. And uh, at the time I was born, we were living like 90% off the lot. You know, just, you know, maybe buying sugar, lard, and uh, milk, you know, and flour. That's pretty much it. You know, the rest of the stuff we lived off the lot until I had, until I had six years old. Well, I was taken to a boarding school. Went there for 10 years. Yeah. So I had lost everything uh, during boarding school. I went back home, didn't know what to do. I uh, didn't know how to get food or not. So I became a teacher. First as an art teacher. And then I became a, a elementary teacher, and then a director, and then here I am. Yeah. But uh, it was in about 84 when my grandfather asked me I should learn the education system of our people. And where it knocked the socks out of me because I was pushing ac academic education. Yeah. We started off with a, I became director in 81, where high school students, what we call high school, is more like teenagers. Supposed to be in seventh grade, they were reading third grade level. So that's when we started. By 96, uh, we had pretty close to 100 uh, graduate students from back home. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. But uh, like in today's world, you know, most, most of the children are, yeah, computer uh, oriented. Yeah. So, some of them don't know about much about the bush, and especially the, people, the ones that live on the reservation. Yeah. But there are still some people that still don't know, live off the land. And uh, I, since I was told, you know, in '84, I've been living pretty much off the land, relearning what was my culture, what was our food source, what skills did we have. I went as far back as learn how to make my bone bone and arrow, flat napping, yeah. Go for a month without food, you yeah. know, this kind of food. Yeah, but uh, living off the land, yeah. And you still feel the old city of strong, yeah. I went back to that time, you know, go sleep in the winter time. Yeah, in the middle of the winter, you know, sleep under the stars, yeah. Yeah, just gotta get ready for it, you know, prepare yourself, you just don't go out to it, you know. Yeah. Once you know how, you know, no more fear. Yeah. Yes? With the Idaho movements, are you optimistic about the future? Oh, uh, you see, like uh, Grandfather William used to tell the story about the Seventh Fire Company. And uh, the Seventh Fire, uh, where we meet the face of death or the handshake that we're going to get. With Bill C. 45, it's like the face uh, of death. With the action of uh, I don't know more, it's more of a handshake from the society, not the government. So who's going to speak on behalf of the people? Will the people get up yeah. and talk to their government? Are we going to walk in this pathway that he already, yeah, science, 
So, yeah, like I see so many, many legends. Like uh, what grandmother uh, spent. I see her as a midwife. Yeah. Who's uh, birthing a nation. And then the, the, the baby is crying right now. What does he want? So some people are crying for nature, to, you know, protect Mother Earth. But some people want to, what you call it, revenue sharing. Yeah. Revenue sharing is continuing industrialization. So, yeah, I'm just getting my time, kind of look at what's going on, you know. And like for me, what I have seen since 1980 is that there was nothing in the classroom in our community. We just had the academic books that was coming. So in 1981, the development for uh, cultural oriented curriculum was beginning to develop. And then uh, by, by the 90s, we had the elders coming into the classroom, doing uh, ceremonies, drumming, you know. And now we see it in, uh, in meetings, gathering, wow. So I have seen the nation waking up since 1980. It gives me hope. Yeah. It does give me hope. Um, but, but Jake, it's just because it's very important if you think about the Amish. Because as I have shown you before with some statistics, there's a the cycle of water on the planet. And some water, actually all of the water, it goes through the Amazon at some point in time. Why does it go through the Amazon? Because it's cleansing itself. It's a process of cleansing. It goes into the rivers, and you know that you know in the Amazon there's two seasons. There's the no rainy seasons and the rainy seasons, right? So the, actually the, the, the water is doing what it does best. It's fluctuating, it goes up, it's breathing, it's falling down <coughs> all the time. It's like us, the same thing as us. The planet is 75% water. We are from 70 to 90% water. As we age, we have this water. We're basically the same thing as the planet. I mean, if you take a plant, is basically the same thing, it's in proportion. So we are all water. So the important thing about the Amazon is that that water is being polluted by our species, it goes there to cleanse itself. Because you know, like uh, for instance, uh, in the era of patriarchy, there's been um, something that was given to humans, but to men, fire. We were the gardens of fire. But we forgot about that as males and as human beings. So nowadays we have a lot of combustion, but no fire. Like all the materials here, they have already passed through fire with all the regulations of the state and stuff like that. And we have also managed or rather, we have mismanaged to use fire. And we have, we think, mastered the father of all fires, which is nuclear energy. And nuclear energy produces nuclear waste, a lot of nuclear waste. And, uh, some of you have circulated a video which is called, uh, what is it called, Into Eternity? Into Eternity. <coughs> which is a video that talks about 
how one country on the planet, Finland, has decided by law to get rid of its nuclear waste. So I guess in this past century they approved this law by which they forbid the country to create any more fire of that sort, nuclear power, and to deal with the nuclear waste. So they decided to, to bury the nuclear waste five kilometers into the ground, and they call it onkalo. Onkalo is a Finnish word which means a hiding place. And they, they, they are in the process of burying 3,000 tons of nuclear waste, which is, well, uh, you know, the, what we have in terms of global quantities is from 250,000 tons to 300,000 tons of nuclear waste and growing. Because all of the other countries, developed countries, other than Finland, they're still creating nuclear plants to provide for energy. 80% <coughs> of this light comes from nuclear plants. <coughs> you know, every time you turn off whatever electrical device you have, you are using 80% <coughs> of nuclear power. I remember I had a class of uh, sacred relations when the tsunami in Indonesia happened, like, uh, uh, well, actually in Japan. And uh, just before coming to my class, I learned that the day after the tsunami happened in Japan, Harper decided to create two more power, nuclear power plants in Ontario. And you know that Canada is the, sec is the, the first country in terms of nuclear waste per capita, and the second country in terms of nuclear energy. And nowadays, no, Ontario is the densest province, I guess, on the planet in terms of nuclear reactors. Yeah, you wanted to add something? Mm -hmm. Well, my question is twofold. So I guess the first part is I guess you agree with the type of ideas like in Quebec, closing down for nuclear, like they closed down um, Jean T. Whatever it's called, the, the nuclear power plant in Quebec. So I guess you agree with that. But also, the second part of the question is like, because people often use the argument that nuclear, nuclear energy is cleaner than other alternative energies. Um, like, do you just do you just feel that much we use less energy? Like, because that's not so realistic. What energies would you suggest using instead of uh, instead of nuclear energy? Well, first of all, I don't think nuclear energy is clean energy because then you have to dispose of the nuclear waste. You know what radiation does to you? I mean, okay, when you, you when you create a nuclear plant, you are basically using uranium, okay? And the mid, the average life, the decay life of your uranium is one hundred thousand years. So for all those one hundred thousand years. The uranium is going to be active and is going to you know, emit radiation and that radiation goes to the, to the molecular level and it hits, if it hits beams, sentient beams, it destroys, it changes the, uh, the genetic makeup of beings. You know? And that lasts for 100,000 years. But when you're using uranium, the byproduct is an element that doesn't exist in nature. It's called, it's called plutonium. And the average life of plutonium is one million years. So the, the, way, the nuclear waste that was buried in Finland is basically plutonium. And, you know, and they're going to finish this project uh, in about 100 years from now. So the workers that are doing this, they're not going to see the, you know, the burial site. And, uh, and they don't have the certainty that that's, what, that's going to happen like not even in 10,000 years, it's 100,000 years. You know? So there's no proportion how, when we talk about nuclear energy. It's just a really bad idea. And it's because it came with the age of patriarchal rule. You know, the concept of beings, not only on the planet, but also like uh, according to our perception in the cosmos, they gave us as human beings, as, as males as well, the power 
to manage or administer fire that we forgot and we went to the limit <coughs> to actually use the ultimate source of power which is nuclear energy we broke down the the atom to get that power you know and that, this is very pertinent because uh, when Derek Rasmussen is going to come here to class he'll be talking how there was a social fission that happened when the Europeans came to our lands. And this, this parallel is creating a parallel between nuclear fission with social fission. So in nuclear fission, you actually there's four forces in the universe. Electromagnetism, gravity, the weak force, and the strong force. What's the strong force? Is the force, anybody knows the strong force? It happens at, 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 at the atomic level. The strong force is what keeps the nucleus of the atom together. So it's the neutrons and the protons, they are together in the nucleus, you know? And they don't go away because there's a nuclear, a strong force holding them together. The weak force, it keeps the electrons orbiting the nucleus. That's the weak force. So as human beings, and as, as Western human beings, we have managed to break down the nucleus. And we, when we break down the nucleus, there is huge energy that is liberated. And that is the, this, that's at the core of our era. You know, so much so that we are totally dependent on energy of all sorts. And increasing, increasingly so on nuclear energy, you know. So, um, but uh, let me go back to the uh, to the role of water. In this uncle, in this hiding place that the Finnish are building, they are putting, you know, like uh, like barrels of uh, nuclear waste deep into the ground, and they are using water to contain that because water is the only thing that can shield the radiations of nuclear waste. The same thing like in Japan, you know? The problem with, I think, reactor number four is that uh, they couldn't control the water pools. And actually, there was like a meltdown. They, they are not telling us, but there was a meltdown, you know? And even some of that radiation has been detected in the US and in uh, uh, British Columbia, you know? So we don't really know what's going to happen, because if that uh, you know, storage place for uh, the uh, nuclear uh, material is uh, broken, because there's going to be like an earthquake or something like that, all that nuclear waste is still there. It's going to just propagate around the planet, and uh, we are going to suffer the consequences. So that's why it's so important that we keep alive some of these places where, nu where water gets cleansed, like Canada, for instance, lots of water here, like the Amazon, you know, all the water goes by the Amazon at some point in time, and it's cleansing itself, it's regaining its vitality, it's regaining its structure, you know? And uh, so what uh, Jake was sharing with us, it, it's very important, you know, it's, 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 it has to do with also the role of the Amazon, which is not only like a pile of resources waiting for us to exploit them. It's something that we have to keep for the sake of our children. I can, I, and I can go for hours about that, so just interrupt me and uh, throw me a question or comment. There was a... <coughs> A woman I was talking to a few years back, 98, I think it was. She was talking about her community where they did some uh, uranium mining. But uh, then I could jobs and you know, good pay and everything, so the family sent their boys there too. Next thing is that the man started dying. for all your uranium carrying it out by hand and stuff. <coughs> she was talking about her husband. <coughs> her 
were four out on the lake. And the guy went to start his motor and his arm just stayed there. Yeah, just fell off. Yeah. So uh, most people deteriorated back then. Quite a use of that. So, yes, they're going to be making some more for uh, the North American Water Project, where the transfer of water is going to go from James Bay all the way down to an aquifer in uh, Arizona. And they will use the nuclear pump to get that water down there. So there's one being built in Shibugum to pump the water on this side into the Ottawa River. They're making another one in Ontario to pump the water into Lake Ontario from, uh, from uh, Ottawa River. And then there's going to be another one uh, in Ontario to pump the water into Lake Superior. And then another one on the other side of Lake Superior going west to pump it into a, uh, what you call it, the Colorado, Colorado water, uh, River watershed. So there's six that have been built just by this water, water project. Like uh, Marcelo said, I don't think it's a good idea. But is the ego, the ego of man that strong to believe in himself that he could do something or something bad? You know, like I explained sometimes, a car seems like a, a good thing that the uh, But it's taken away our legs. It's taken away our stamina. It's taken away our patience. And yet we, we want it. We want our children to have Because if you don't continue taking more and more minerals out of the land. It's going to take more substance from, from the earth to try to put some more gas or water, even on what you call it, nitrogen car. Yeah. At one point we had that much gas, now we're going to do that to the water. Something to think about, to consider. Solar, solar power will be much more advanced. I think we can really do well off that, as well as uh, hydro power, extra water. Problem with solar is as well the chemical byproducts. We can make a solar panel. There's a lot of waste. Like the Prius car is a good idea, but the parts that you use to make it are really chemical. Well, there's a few spare waste, of course. Oh yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Well, we have been using solar power since the beginning. I mean, all the other nations, non human nations, they have been relying on the solar power. You know, and they don't need the solar panels for that. They just need like a, the magic of water and the magic of the sun. You know that a seed, for instance, if you put a seed into asphalt, okay, and you just let a drop of water <coughs> go into the seed, it's going to create forces so great that they break apart the asphalt. You know, actually they measure that, and it creates forces of the order of 5G. That is five gravitational fields all together, and that's why it breaks. And it, all it takes is just water and sand. So they have been using, we have been using solar power all along. What's petroleum? Petroleum is solar energy in condensed form, you know, because it's, it comes from the dinosaurs and from, from plants and trees that have been buried 
and uh, you know subjected to huge pressures and temperatures, so it became petroleum. So when we are using petroleum, we're actually using the energy of of, of Father Santa. Right? So we've been doing that, and I think we can still do that if we become more humble and if we stop believing that we are, you know, at the summit of evolution. We're just one species among millions of others. And so that's what it takes. And like for instance, like, you know, Jake was sharing with us, uh, like, you know, you, do you remember the Chacana, the Southern Cross, how they derived it, all that? Well, those are the instructions of our of my constitution as an Andean indigenous person. Jacob has basically the same thing with the back of the turtle, is their constitution. What's our constitution? It's a book with some thoughts from these illuminated European men. You know, and then we have to accommodate our realities to these male ideas. And uh, but th this is going to, it's, that, as, as Jake mentioned, that has come to a turning point in the year 2000. <coughs> and, and things are happening, you know, and uh, maybe you are one of the rainbow warriors that was brought to light by uh, Chief Spence, who knows? It's really up to us to <coughs> that our actions are going to to be, you know, to, to pay honor to our future generations and to our ancestors. You know, and, uh, yeah. So any, anybody else wants to share something? I'll keep you here for 10 more minutes, and then I'll let you go. Yes, please. This is not really related to the energy discussion, but uh, is, is this uh, vision of yours specific to the nation, or is this a shared vision amongst the six different uh, nations? The vision of the earth that you discussed. Yeah. Well, it's a uh, vision of, uh, you know, like amongst the six nations. Yeah. Like in our stories, is that human was the last to come in after the animals and all of them had settled already. So at one point where like the winter comes you know, so the, the land goes to sleep. Right? So it is said that uh, uh, what's it called? All the creatures had a dream of just one spirit. So in the springtime when they woke up, yeah, they talked about the spirit. So they went to the fire and they did their prayers to the creator. The creature was going to come to, the, to live amongst them. They were going to give them uh, a gift yeah, to coexist, to give up leadership, to give up songs. Yeah, from each animal creature and what I have. So anyways, this is how he became home. That every part of nature was part of him. And he was part of everything else. Yeah. So, <clears throat> this is what we, we believe, pretty much uh, the same thing in all parts of uh, Turtle Island, with, with the same foundation of people that grew up from the land. You know. They understand that the land is all Mother Nature and all that. You know. So, uh, where was I going? So anyway, <laughs> so anyways, uh, what, uh, it's shared, but you know, like, you can't have the same belief in the North with the Inuit and the guy that's in, uh, in Arizona. Yeah. But they believe in nature just the same, yeah. although their environment is different. Yeah. But yes, they all believe that uh, we all come from the turtle. Yes, we come from the same land. All the creatures from the same creator, what we call nature. 
you know, father, son, and you see, like, uh, like, uh, <clears throat> <coughs> but it, uh, what I just want to say is, uh, you see, like, the sun, the water, the earth, and uh, the air what was all separate in space at one point. So the earth and the water got married. And with the blessing of uh, the sun, it created diversity between light and dark. It created all kinds of species. And depending on how cold it was, how far away it was from the sun, created different species. Yeah. And then from the, the blessing from the, the oxygen created different species of them, according to how much sun and da, da, da. So this is how we believe evolution came to be and that we are part of it. We cannot separate it. We're, we're part of the same body yeah, that represents a different gene. That's it. <coughs> But yes, we do believe that we are, yeah, within the cosmology of things, we come from the same creator. And like, do you know, for instance, um, I, I want to show you this picture, which is, as you know, it's a chacana. So this is a the constitution of Andean Amazonian people. But this is also like, a, well, you can see like some animals that are recurrent in other, uh, beliefs of other indigenous peoples, like the turtle, for instance. And uh, you, see, you see at the center of the Chacana, there's the sun. But this is not the, the sun that is like out there. It's the sun that is inside our planet. Because you know that the core of our planet is a small sun. It has a lot of energy. It's like a little sun inside of the Mother Earth. So the shape of the Chacana is like a stairs like this because it's trying, as Jacob has mentioned, it's trying to marry, put together the Chachawarmi, Mother Earth with Father Son. And that's why there's like stairs going up. And also Jacob has found another uh, mention to how we share the wisdom of our ancestors from wherever we come. This is a Mayan calendar. Do you want to explain this, Jacob? <laughs> You see, like these 13 pieces here, plus that one, it's the same thing as on the turtle. You have 13 on each head plus the one. So if you stretch it out, stretch it out, it'll put like a shirt on the turtle's back. So this is somewhat of a map of North America. And uh, the thing of what I've learned from this is that, like in a Chicana, yeah, you got that pyramid on top, and then you also have uh, what you call it, like an arena going down, stepping down, right? So you have this face here. Uh, in the middle of the Chicana. So that means, like what I see is that uh, there's the, uh, the, the Maya calendar up there, while the, what you call it, Aztec calendar has the face of a skull, the face of death. The Chicana? Yeah. So when you go back to years, these two phases comes together and creates the yin and yang. And all the dots that are around, yeah, around uh, the calendar becomes the star system. So what you see in the Chicana is that it's the whole universe that you're looking at. Yeah. Through the Aztec and the Maya calendar. 
So what did you call the, the other one with the face, the aspect, uh, the face of the, the, the one that's supposed to end 2012, that guy there? Yeah, and this one would be the new world. That's the new world coming. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. <coughs> I, this is uh, the four temples that you would see in uh, Magna Carta. Yeah. And this is the world, the way they see it. The same thing as you, you would see in uh, the Magna Carta of all the, the two worlds. Yeah, <coughs> the Americas and that. So anyway, you know, like, <coughs> That's some of the things I have learned, you know, through my travels, you know, how I see that. So it becomes three-dimensional. So, like, when I carry my hand, you know, which is like the sacred geometry. So my heart becomes the middle of that section there. So I carry that calendar as well. I was just going to say, it's just a comment on uh, the calendar itself. It's, it's very symmetrical, but the symmetry in it is also different as well. Like, I just find that, um, I guess that the colors are used in opposing sections, like the two little faces at the bottom, the white and the yellow. They're the exact same face, but they're the opposite color. So I guess just, uh, my question is, Obviously, there's a point of having the symmetry and the different colors, but what means what, or do you know how to interpret it, I guess? It's I think it's at the core of indigenous thought. Okay. What, what, what does symmetry imply? When, when symmetry happens, and there's two things, that's that, a relationship. Right. And according to the beliefs of the and so many people, everything comes in pairs. So that's why things are symmetric. And actually in physics, they also have proof that reality, that the reality, the reality you are experiencing right now, they call it symmetry breaking. Because there's one component, which is time. If you add time to space, this, the original symmetry that occurs in physics is broken. And that's where reality comes about and you are able to sense it because there's the time component. So even in Western sciences, this is knowledge. The only difference is that this is another language. Right. It's like, uh, you know what, Turtle Island, basically the same perception, well, not the same perception. It's the same perception of the same ontology, it's, it's another perception of the same ontological object. Like for instance, if you look at, um, at this device here, you're watching it from your perspective, and I'm watching it from my perspective. If I describe it, I'm going to describe it very differently from the way you're going to describe it. But we're watching at the same object. So that also, you know, proves the point that we're all in a circle of life. We all have our own perspective. Unfortunately, we believe, especially in, in, you know, in in, the, in Western educational systems, that the only truth is that which comes from Western sciences. We don't respect the other systems of knowledge and wisdom. We say, no, this is taboo. This is uh, not good. It's uh, legend. This is myth. But it's just another perception. You know? Did I confuse you more? No, it just it just makes me think, which is good. But right. <laughs> uh, one of the things is that the, this uh, this is dimensional. If you're able to look at it in dimension, so this would be green of background. So you're bringing this up, and this one is suspended in the same level as this one. 
and this one goes down a little bit be, like would be behind and that one behind first so you create a dimension right each one of them is a dimension that you see it's a time space that you see you're going through time as you enter to see the creator which is somewhat this is what it represents the creator or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. He's the one that suspended to the overlook the universe. 